Today, I was thinking about languages and how we acquire them. How can a baby hear, Is you such a cute baby? Yes, you are. Who's the cutest? Yes, you are. Where'd the teddy go? Where'd the teddy go? Here's the teddy. Yeah. How can a baby hear that and learn words and sentences? New research shows us how. Let's find out. It's the Joe Show. Let's jump right into it out of Lancaster University. How people work out the meanings of new words has been revealed by researchers. The research is published in Cognition by Professor Patrick Rebucht and Professor Padactic Monang, who said, have you ever caught yourself saying long burbly sentences, streams of words to babies? Who's the cutest? Yes, you are. Where'd the teddy go? So how do babies listen to this and people learning a new language listen to this burbling and figure out the new language? There are actually two problems that young children and people learning a new language have to solve. They need to work out which sounds group together to form words and what these words mean. Of course, as babies, everything is new to us, so we have to just figure out the sounds. When we're a little bit older learning a language, we have a base in our mother tongue on how sounds form together and work as one. The second thing that we have to do is understand how these words go together to form sentences to communicate what we mean to the listener. But the researchers point out that this is an interwoven problem because we need to be able to acquire what the words mean and they need to know what role that they play in the sentence that's being said. Example is the word teddy. Where'd the teddy go? Is it about a thing or what the thing is doing or something else entirely? And to figure out what a word's role is, the child or the learner has to already know what it means. Professor Roips points out this is a chicken and egg type of problem. Which comes first, the word or the sentence? To find out, researchers tested how people learned new words and sentences by giving adults an artificial language to learn. Oh, an artificial language. I can do this. Hold on. <clears throat> Zero one zero zero one one zero zero one zero one one zero one zero one bacon and eggs. Researchers invented a language spoken by aliens. Don't know why they did that. We already have one. It's called Vulcan. Look it up. Thanks, Star Trek. Live long and prosper, bitches. Then they showed people sentences in this alien language alongside scenes showing aliens carrying out different actions. Okay, this article doesn't have pictures, but I'm very curious what these aliens look like. Did they go with the grays with the big head, the big gray head that comes to a point down at the bottom of a nice pointed chin with the big black eyes? Or do they go maybe like an insect based alien where they had like, you know, wings and antennas? Or did they go with something completely out of the box and do like, I don't know, like a, like a bacteria looking alien that looked more like uh, a cell at a massive scale carrying out an action? Or did they just make them look like humans and color them green? Like what did these aliens actually look like? And also what actions were these aliens doing? Were they like taking care of each other, cooking, cleaning? Or are they doing weird alien stuff like, you know, putting probes in people? They say over time, learners were able to acquire words, meanings, and their roles in the scenes, the names of the aliens, their colors, and the actions they were doing. Sounds sexy. They say the learners did this by keeping track of all the associations between words and the different aspects of the scenes across many trials before then narrowing down the focus on those associations that were reliable. Meaning, they watched the scene a bunch of times, listened to the scene a bunch of times, made some assumptions about what things meant, and then over time, through trial and error, narrowed it down to verify which assumptions were correct. Professor Roybus said, so when you say the sentence including the word teddy, where'd the teddy go? Very often, the baby's teddy bear, or the teddy bear in reference, is nearby and in view, or in the scene. When this occurs repeatedly over time, the child is able to eventually figure out that look at the teddy and that teddy means the cuddly brown thing that you keep referring to and holding up. They go on to say that the only way to learn a new language is by keeping track of the words and grammar across hundreds of learning trials, a process called cross-situational statistical learning. I'll say that again, cross-situational statistical learning. It's pretty cool. So smart. Professor Roybst said, we knew children and adults 
can use this learning process to acquire individual words in very limited languages. But it is remarkable to witness that our participants could use this process to learn a highly complex alien language with considerable speed. It shows the power of the human's ability to keep track of all kinds of possible links between languages and the world. The other professor involved in the study, Professor Magnahan, added, We've discovered that the chicken and egg problem of learning a language can be solved by hearing lots of language and then applying some very simple but very powerful learning to this. Our brains are clearly geared up to keep track of these links between words and the world. We already know that infants have the same power to their learning as adults, and we are very confident that young children acquire language using the same types of learning as the adults in our study. So, what does this prove? What did we learn? Well, first, we learned about <laughs> cross-situational statistical learning as the premier method of learning a new language. Babel, Duolingo, and Memrise, take note because you've got to integrate some CSSL into your platform. We all know what that means at this point. So when you're learning a new language, don't get discouraged, but instead do more and more trial and errors of speaking, listening, hearing, and making associations in your brain and eventually you'll get the hang of it. But definitely hearing and speaking seem to be the premier ways to learn a new language and a lot of trial and error. That's been today's Joe Show Thoughtful Thursday. If you like my content, hit that subscribe button and match that bell to get a notification every time I upload a new video. And until next time, think of something good because you know it, I love you.